My first flat earth video. <sighs> Please show me some evidence. Hello everybody, you were listening to Feature Mind, and so there are many proofs of the flat earth dome firmament that we are contained in. In this particular video, we will focus in on how the Operation Fishbowl specifically proves the dome firmament. I'm giving you five minutes. Please show me some evidence. And so, there are many proofs of the flat earth dome firmament that we are contained in. In this particular video, we will focus in on how the Operation Fishbowl specifically proves the dome firmament. In later videos, we will cover many other proofs. So make sure you click your notification bell so you don't miss the videos as they become available. And so what you are about to witness is the research I have put together about the Operation Fishbowl Program. This is award-winning material you are about to witness. My research into Operation Fishbowl has actually earned me an International Flat Earth Award, which was presented to me at the first annual Flat Earth International Conference in 2017. Number 11, best dome-themed video, Feed Your Mind. Flat Earth Award given by other Flat Earthers. You must be very proud. Reflective properties of the dome and how they can use it for communication purposes. And so this wide LS project was located in Alaska. And to this day, you can visit the site and see evidence of these structures that scientists were using to communicate by bouncing signals off of the sky. And as we all know, the sky is not a solid object, so there's no way that they're bouncing signals off of the sky, no matter what they try to tell you about the ionosphere or whatever. They're not bouncing signals off of the sky. They're bouncing signals off of the reflective dome firmament. I believe the dome firmament to have electromagnetic properties. There could be some type of energy that's associated with this force field in addition to just being a solid barrier structure. So the White Alice Project and Operation Fishbowl was two totally different things. They had two totally different functions. Um, the White Alice Project was... Um, technology before it's time to be quite honest with you. Um, it was a military radar site. It detected, it detected Soviet air bombers during the Cold War. That's why it was located in Alaska very close to the Soviet Union. Um, Operation Fishbowl however, this was uh, located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on an island and this was a nuclear test site in which conducted 11 nuclear tests. Um, they really had no relation to each other other than they were both part of the United States and part of our military. Um, now as far as the ionosphere goes, now this is a, a layer of the Earth, Earth's atmosphere that can extend 600 miles up above the Earth. Um, that is way higher than uh, what airplanes can actually fly. So uh, space starts I believe at 62 miles. So anyway, this this layer of the atmos of the Earth's atmosphere contains a high concentrated amount of ions and free electrons that is able to reflect radio waves. Technology. And so communication was a massive problem for the military to communicate. And so I believe behind the scenes Russia and the US during the Cold War were actually working on an agenda. And so as scientists were mastering bouncing the signals off of the dome, they noticed that the northern lights actually affected the communication and interfered with the signals. And so that's a pretty interesting piece of information, that the Aurora Borealis actually affects signals. Let me know what you all think about that in the comments section. And so the striking thing about this White Alice military base is that we must remember that this was before satellites existed. So, and so to me, this White Alice military base is empirical evidence that satellite tech is actually signals being bounced off of the dome. This is very solid evidence that satellites do not exist. And so this White Alice base was even before the space race, it was before NASA, it was before even Operation F So a research team in 2017 at the University of Bath discovered that the Northern Lights actually improve radio signals. Which makes sense considering that the Northern Lights are really produced from charged particles from the sun. Just saying. To communicate by bouncing signals off of the sky. And as we all know, the sky is not a solid object, so there's no way that they're bouncing signals off of the sky, no matter what they try to tell you about the ionosphere or whatever. They're not bouncing signals off of the sky. They're bouncing signals off of the reflective dome firmament. 
I believe the dome firmament to have electromagnetic properties. There could be some type of energy that's associated with this. Well, you believe this is why? Well, that's a pretty good reason to trust you. Pretty good evidence. The wall I got out of that was, this is very solid evidence because you think it to be so. That's all that said to me. Which, I'm sorry, but that isn't very solid evidence. I hope this guy don't make me dumber. Base race, it was before NASA. It was before even Operation Fishbowl. Which I actually believe Operation Fishbowl was directly connected to this White Ellis project because they're definitely practicing the same technologies that they were practicing during Operation Fishbowl. So I believe Operation Fishbowl was the finalization of whatever they had. Operation Fishbowl. I don't know. Maybe because um, it was on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? Could be a pretty good reason. For over-the-horizon communication... I believe this white LS technology is what led to cellular communication technology and GPS technology as well. They were able to send the signal up into the sky and then have the signal come back down to a location at a satellite base across the land. It's still no evidence. I think this is going to be a long night. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed and uh, please don't be afraid to like and subscribe.